and WECS. Okay, here we go. Here's what I want to tell you. Born and bred in New York City, Hollis Brown embarked on a pilgrimage to Nashville to capture their authentic sound. They shacked up for two weeks in the backyard cabin slash studio of producer Adam Landry and found themselves. They recorded everything live to analog tape, creating a warm vintage sound that displayed the band's explosive live energy. Spin writes, Hollis Brown make music that sounds just as alive today as it would have been in 1966 and will be 40 years from now. This should come as no surprise as principal songwriters Mike Montali and John Bonilla grew up listening to the classics. These native New Yorkers were born in the late 80s when the city was identified by its grit, passion, and authenticity. The combination of an urban upbringing and throwback musical influences of traditional blues contributed heavily to the band. Right now, we're going to be talking with John Bonilla of Hollis Brown. How are you, John? I'm great. How are you doing? Excellent. So, this is like the hot band right now I hear. Hollis Brown. Yeah. Or at least that's what you want everybody to think, right? Uh, yeah, that's usually how it goes. If people think you're hot, you might do something. I got to tell you, I, I just came across a song last summer called okay. Ride on the Train. Yeah. And ironically, uh, like a week after I heard the song for the first time, I found myself on a 31-hour train ride. <laughs> and the only thing that kept me from jumping off that train was I, I had my laptop and I could listen to... Uh, Right on the train by you guys, and it was, it was amazing. It's a perfect song for that scenario. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was written about that. Uh, our singer Mike takes the train every day to work, and uh, on the the hand train in over in Queens that goes into Manhattan, there were uh, some like mariachi players on the uh, train, and <laughs> and uh, they play almost like every day on there, you know. And that's where you got the idea, so he decided to write the song about them. That is cool. Yeah. A very cool video that went, goes along with it, too. Yeah, we got to thank the clones for that. They uh, they do, like, this YouTube comedy sketch thing every Friday, and we uh, we asked them. We were real big fans of them, so we asked them to do the video, and I think it's one of our better videos. Who, who did the video for you? Uh, it's, a, it's a comedy uh, trio called The Clones. They uh, they do, like, this uh, YouTube like sketch comedy thing every Friday that they put out. And we were we were all into it, and we asked them if they wanted to do a music video. And I don't know if it was their first one; I think it was their second video they've ever done. But they they agreed, and it came out great. That's great. I'll have to check that out. We do a a feature here on each show called Something Silly, where we watch a silly video, and we discuss it uh, with my partner. And uh, we have a grand old time. So I'll, I'll look that up uh, to see if they. Yeah, have that's, it. that'd definitely be up your alley. They're from uh, they're from Brooklyn over here in New York. Cool. Are, yeah. are there any good places? I, I go down to the city once in a while, but are there any good places to go to get like some used CDs or records? Um, oh, there's there's a bunch. Uh, if you go to the like the West Village, there's Bleaker Bob's, which is yep. in there forever. That's where I used to go when I uh, I was just getting out of high school. I used to go down there, and I was just getting the vinyl. I would go down there and just spend every last cent in my pocket on a record. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a couple other places. Uh, there's Revolution. I know. Is it Revolution? I think they just need the Generation Records. It's over on, uh, I believe it's on somewhere in the, I don't even know where these places are. I just know where they go. <laughs> yep. you know? I'm like, oh, uh, like, that's the garbage can. I guess I got to take a left there. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm so bad at addresses. So, but, um, you're, you're in the city today, right? You're playing at uh, the Winter Jam Festival in Central Park? Uh, yeah, we just did that. We just got back. We we're in a story of Queensland, and we just played two sets in the absolute freezing cold. I couldn't even feel my fingers up there, but it was awesome. I mean, there were a lot of people there that never heard us before, so it was cool. We played two half-hour sets. Nice. And uh, we were absolutely freezing up there. You know, the guitars were going out of tune every two seconds because it was so cold, but, you know, it's rock and roll. We just kept we kept playing through it. Do you have to wear gloves so your fingers don't freeze? Or? Say that again? Do you have to wear gloves so your fingers don't freeze on the playing the guitar? Uh, I mean, between the sets, but on, while I was on stage, I couldn't wear gloves. No, so like my my hands are like turning blue. <laughs> Man, but uh, well, you know, you play through it. You know, I mean, people seem to like it, so it was fun. I saw that you posted that uh, you were excited that uh, there was some free ski lessons or something going on. 
Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole day they had these uh, ski lessons. It was funny because uh, I was watching all these little kids, you know, fall on their face and just like no one really knew how to ski over there. But it, it was uh, it was an interesting thing to watch. I didn't ski myself. Our, our drummer was more excited than than us. He yeah. into like that X Games type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I was trying to do some research to prepare for this interview, uh, I really couldn't find much out there about Hollis Brown. Uh, you guys well, need, yeah, to hire, you need, need to hire some new marketing people, I think. <laughs> I totally agree. Actually, they've just been hired. Um, our, our Wikipedia page is coming soon. I'm sure it'll be up before the album. Excellent, but, excellent. Uh, yeah, all, all I could so. find was some uh, thing about Bob Dylan's song, Ballad of Hollis Brown. Yeah, well, that's where we that's where we got the name from. It's from uh, it's from a song of the times they are changing by Bob Dylan. I mean, uh, we basically just listen to Bob Dylan every second of the day. So, you know, we just decided to name our band after that. You know, it's one of our favorite songs, and it worked out. Everyone agreed, and it became the band name. I I, I can understand the the legend of of Bob Dylan and uh, his popularity. But it, uh-huh. it, it it's kind of weird when I hear people say that they they really like him. I mean. I've listened to his music. I don't think it's... I enjoy it, parts of it. Yeah. You as a fan of, of Bob Dylan, what, what, what is it about him that you like? Oh, man. It's, it's, what, what don't I like? Everything. <laughs> uh, the, it's I, unique. I, love how, <laughs> I tell you, I, my, what I love is that you can tell what era of Bob Dylan by the tone of his voice. And, you know, like early Dylan, it's, it's you know, a little boyish. And then, like, late 60s, early 70s, he got really country. And then by by the eighties, he just I mean he had like I guess he started going to like a more Tom Waits like rough you know blues yeah. type thing where it's just it's so disgusting it's beautiful you know yeah what do you <laughs> think I, about what do you think about his son um, Jacob? Jacob yeah uh, he's all right I mean he's definitely the best son from the you know that whole you know legends of rock and roll thing you know from mm. like Julian Lennon Sean Lennon and him by. I mean, there's a couple of Wallflower songs I like, but uh, I'm not really like the biggest fan. But I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm, a big part. Of, the one thing I love about Dylan is he's he always had a great band behind him, and he never kept the same band for too long. So his sound always evolved and changed. You know, very interesting. Like, yeah, like he always. I mean, I, I never talked to him personally, but I feel like he uh, purposely chose the band for what type of album he wanted, you know? That's cool. So, you know, so it was definitely, cool. uh, yeah. I always like to learn something new about uh, some music. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I actually woke up listening to this morning, preparing <laughs> for the show. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So you've got a new release coming out uh, on March uh, something? March 5th. March 5th. Uh, called yeah. Ride on the Train? Yeah, it's coming out on a live record, so... Oh wow! We record, yeah, we recorded it a couple, uh, a little, about a, a little over a year ago, and uh, we put out the EP a couple months ago, and we sent it to a live records, and they really fell in love with it. Cool. They wanted, they, they signed us. We actually just signed a contract, maybe like, oh, two weeks ago, maybe. Excellent. Yeah. And um, while I was doing my research, I, I came across um, your. I don't know if it's your first album, Hallis Brown. Yeah, that was a that was like a self release we did a couple years ago. Yeah, you know? I, I was found in the back uh, studios here and uh, brushed off the dust, and, and it was cool. I just opened up the show with a with, with a song, and it was awesome. What did I do? Yeah. I did "Walk on Water." Oh yeah, well that's it's it's funny because on the new album we have a different version of that song. Ah, so, does it yeah. kick, does it kick butt like the original? I think it kicks it kicks more butt. I mean, we we totally uh, recorded it completely different. I mean, uh, the first album, a lot of it was tracked and it was done. And it was like really polished. And the, the album that's coming out now is everything was done live in the studio, straight to tape. No Pro Tools was used during the recording. And uh, did you do the analog? Yeah, everything was done analog. The awesome. Like, the record is coming out March fifth. It sounds really, really raw and. And raunchy, which is what we wanted to go for. So that's cool. I, I know another band that did that recently, and, and it, I just love the sound. Just love that analog sound. Yeah, I mean, the studio we recorded in was uh, was in Nashville. Our producer Adam Lindry, he uh, he has a house, but in the backyard he has this gar- like a garage, and he sort of just made it into a studio. So it was like really small and intimate, and it just 
you know, at like this bleed through on all the mics, you know, you could hear, you could hear the vocals and some drum mics. I mean, if you listen carefully enough, you know, Excellent. so, so it, it's just, it just came out the way we wanted it. Sort of like a, a late 60s Stones record in a way. Cool. Yeah. Are you guys going to be doing like any festivals this, this summer? Um, I know we're going down to South by, uh, and we're touring, our tour starts February 27th in Indiana, and it ends March 30th in New York at Murphy Lounge. But uh, I think all the summer tours are being booked now. So, I mean, you just got to keep looking at the website. Mm. And they'll, I'm sure they'll be put up by fe- uh, late February, everything we're doing for the year. I know. So you got some shows coming up in this area in uh, Burlington, Vermont at Red Square on February 1st. And yeah. And in Boston on the 2nd at Great Scott. Yeah. I can't wait for those. I mean, I haven't played in Vermont in quite some- Actually, no, we played... We played outside of Burlington not too long ago, but we haven't played Burlington in a while, so it should be good to get back there. Excellent. I hope to see you yeah. up there. Yeah, are you going to come down? I hope so. It, it, it's a, a bit of a ride, but if I if I can swing it, if there's no big major snowstorms, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I mean, if you come, hopefully we have uh, an advanced copy of the record. I mean, I don't even have them yet, but <laughs> we're supposed to be getting them any day now, so that should be fun. Cool. Yeah. One last question that I ask everybody. I'm doing like a, a poll. I'm going to put the results up on web on some web page or something. Uh, sure. When you're out traveling around, do you yeah. are you do you ever come to a place like do you ever anticipate coming to a city that you know where you have like this local burger joint that is your favorite burger or like a favorite place to get an ice cream cone? Oh, uh, for me, well, not burger, but uh, we're really big into Philly cheesesteaks, mm. so. So whenever we go to Philly, we make it a point to stop at Pat's. So it's I not mean, it's not like a tourist cliche. It's it's they're actually really good. Uh, yeah, I, I I personally like it. I've never tried a, a, a cheesesteak from anywhere else other than Pat's or Gino's, and I Gino's is a disgrace. But Pat's is I mean I I guess it's a tourist cliche, but I still love it. I actually ate three once in a row. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, we uh, after a show we were just like all like a little drunk and, and then I ate one and I was like you know what I can eat another one <laughs> and, and everyone was like yeah just do it and then after the second one I was like you know what I bet I can eat a third and everyone was like do it do it and I'm like oh and I tell you at the time I, I didn't I didn't do anything to me but the next morning I was totally out of commission for like a whole day did your heart stop uh, I don't know but I tell you what the, the bathroom was it never seen a, a war like that ever in its life the toilet was just totally demolished the next day oh man <laughs> well I can't wait to go to Philly now <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah man thanks for everything I uh, hope you keep playing the record you know definitely definitely John Bonilla is that how you pronounce your last name yeah that's it I think I knew a kid in high school John Bonilla he played guitar oh, cool. too oh. awesome so uh, thanks <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Good luck to the best of you, and hopefully we'll see you around uh, when you're in the area. All right. Stay on the line for me, okay? Cool.